I think what I'm most excited about is my, my childhood hero, the, the Tokyo Drift Evo. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing next. I mean, cars have ran in since 2006. No idea what's wrong with it. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring my childhood hero back to life. So How are we gonna help you out with this? Let's, yeah. let's what, go figure it out. Let's what, uh, walk, yeah, let's, let's go take what you got. I saw some radium goodies on Yes, we've got lots of goodies back here. So first off, what we wanted to try out is uh, obviously fuel. The car's been sitting for so long, there's mm -hmm. no telling what the fuel tank looks like. Uh, we went ahead and dropped the fuel tank and found tons and tons of rust or holes in the tank. Our friends over at Radium were kind enough to send us out a, a complete fuel system with some accessories from Beachworks. So we have like Beachworks fuel lines, we have their fuel rails, we have their injectors. And lastly today, we have the wiring and hopefully when we wire this guy up, she, she fires up. We, We'll get to see it today. We'll exactly. get to find out. That, that's the goal. Um, as you guys can see, it's got the original interior from when APR actually built this car and a lot of similarities to the actual movie cars. Uh, one of the biggest similarities that you guys have seen is going to be the foam that they actually the red kept. Foam. The red foam that they kept in the movie, which I thought is a, a really, really cool touch. So are we swapping gauges or are we going to go with the dash? Ooh, go big or go home, right? This guy's a little bit dirty. Oh, it's yeah. A, it's a work yeah. in progress, but one of the coolest things is uh, the uh, OG HKS turbo kit in here. Um, this is actually a, a pretty big turbo. You know, this guy's old, so we're hoping that everything works okay. So, what a, what wastegate is that? It's HKS, man. Just an uh, old big boy. I'm hoping that it actually even opens and, and, and it works correctly. We have a lot of the OG HKS stuff in here, so. We okay. have like the the high performance ignition system, which was uh, oh, something big power. back in the day. Huge. Um, we have their boost controller. Oh, another really cool thing uh, is the TN suspension. This actually has the uh, automatic suspension or uh, dampening, dampening, so you can uh, adjust that inside the car. Uh, I'm 48. <laughs> uh, I remember when they launched this thing. It has a ton of gauges in it, which yes. those probably have auxiliary sensors on the on the engine mm -hmm. and the gearbox and that sort of thing. So we'll probably come in there. Replace those sensors with some AEM sensors, have those wired to a CAN sensor module, and then that single module will send all the information to the dash. Awesome. And I remember Tim was saying that you had the fuel sending unit in the back and you Correct. weren't sure how you were gonna see the fuel level. Correct. You can wire that to the CAN sensor module as well, see that right on the dash. So, there is something. When we go to the track, we need data. And okay. You guys are the data guys. Oh, uh, yeah, let's definitely. Let's check it out. That's okay. You, you mentioned this was your track car. Correct. I mean, we've pretty much been to all the SoCal tracks. So okay. Big okay. Low, Streets, Chuck Walla. Uh, my last event was actually the Grid Life event. We okay. had Grid Life skip day and we went to nice. Big Willow and had some fun with this thing. We did some data logging over there. And okay. I was hoping that you could show me how to actually get that log off of the ECU yep. and into what I do in my editing. Let me grab my laptop. We'll go through the process. We can take a look at different parts in the log and see what you need to do to go faster. We can Perfect. compare laps, see what you did well on one lap that you could do better on another. And then when you're at the track, you'll know exactly what you need to do to go faster. As many of you are aware, this car is running the AEM Infinity ECU. To start the data logging process, we need to make sure all the channels are set up in the ECU. So we're gonna go ahead, flip on ignition power, come up to the ECU, check out some of the channel setup and the logging setup in the Infinity ECU real quick. So we'll start off here by launching Infinity Tuner. Then we have our nice remote USB going to the ECU. We'll go ahead and connect it up. Now, once we're connected to the ECU, you'll see here that it's green at the top. We'll jump up here to logging. And then when we're connected, there's USB logging channel setup. So we'll go into the channel setup. What you'll do is you'll search for the channels that you want on this side. Once the channel that you want is selected, you can go ahead and press add to get it on the selected channel and you can log up to 100 channels on the Infinity ECU. Important channels that you want to log are things like your engine speed, your coolant temp, your pressures, your targets, as well as a lot of the error and diagnostic channels that we have in there. We'll leave a list in the description below just so you can go ahead and load up a channel list so you can actually save the channels that you want to log and then import them as well. So if you're working with a number of different cars and you all want them to log the same channels, you can just load in the channel list. You'll be good to go. This car also runs our vehicle dynamics module, 
which includes roll, pitch, and yaw, and then also GPS, so we can do track mapping and see what was going on on track at a given point. Now that that's all set up and confirmed, we can press OK, and we'll also jump into the wizard real quick, just to show you where the USB logging setup is in the setup wizard. Under advanced setup, we have our USB logging section. This car is gonna log every channel at 20 hertz anytime the vehicle is over 500 RPM. As long as the car is running, we're gonna be recording a log. So we can go ahead and close that out. Dustin has some logs on here that he's already saved from the track when we were out there at Willow Springs just a couple weeks ago. To download the logs, you'll go into logging, USB logging, get logs. A ton of logs here. We'll go through and we'll find the ones from the track. So we can go ahead and select these logs, So we'll save all those. Once we've saved these log files, we can then go in and open them in AEM data, take a look at what we've got, see how we can improve on track, and how Dustin can adjust his driving to get the most out of this platform. The logs are all saved up. Go ahead and close out of there. Connect, we can go ahead and disconnect from the ECU. Unplug, we don't need to be connected to the car anymore. Go ahead and switch the ignition power off. Now let's go over to the tabletop, take a look at the logs. We can actually compare your runs to this 370Z data oh, nice. um, and compare some of the channels like the, uh, the GPS data and the lateral Gs because that car was also running the vehicle dynamics module. So we'll have some real apples to apples comparisons on the same track, on the same day. Different cars, different drivers, but you can still see where this driver was making his speed mm -hmm. gains versus where you could be. So your first hot lap is actually this 149 and then you could see yourself getting progressively faster, then you might have hit traffic or be on a bit of a cool down lap, mm -hmm. and then uh, you're on the gas again, and then you have your in lap, which mm -hmm. is obviously a little bit longer than your regular hot laps. From here, we can start dragging in some of our uh, temperatures, our engine speed, so we'll bring in throttle, we'll also bring in your GPS speed. What's really cool here is we can go in and look at these laps right on top of one another. So right now, we're looking at all of the laps as indicated by this one. We'll look at this 149 here versus your fastest lap, which I believe was this 138. So we'll right click here, we'll set that as the main layer. We'll right click this 138 and we'll set this as layer two. So what you see here, engine speed from layer one in white and your engine speed from layer right. two in orange. And then same goes for the other one. At the top, we have everything based on time. Now, instead of time based, I want to see what was happening at the same time on track at the same corner, same distance, toggle distance and time, F9. You can see the data shifted mm -hmm. a little bit and now it's based off meters instead of time. If you don't have somebody with you walking you through all this, one thing that I do want to highlight is the help section. F1 opens up the help section. There's a great search window in there. So anything that you're looking to do or a function that you want, search in there and then it'll give you instructions on how to do that. Ton of items here. So generating a track map gives you a full write up on how that's done, what you can do, all in the help section if you need it. So let's jump back into the data. We'll take out coolant temp, we'll remove that for now. And we're just looking at engine speed, GPS speed and throttle. Mm -hmm. So the orange is gonna be our fast lap and the white is gonna be our slower lap. And you'll also be able to see on the track map mm -hmm. where each thing was happening. On your slow lap, which actually looks like you're coming onto the track mm -hmm. based on the way the marker was right. on that, and by where your GPS speed, mm -hmm. you're starting out almost from nothing, you know, right. four miles an hour when that lap starts. So I believe that was your, your out lap when you're coming onto the right. track. So in that case, why don't we look at lap three instead? That way it's two laps when you're actually driving. Looks like your braking point was pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. On your faster lap, you actually stayed in the throttle for a bit longer. So by highlighting that section there, we can see that you were in the throttle for 0.7 seconds That's longer. That's crazy, yeah. That 0.7 seconds mm -hmm. longer, along with you know having, a, having more speed, speed coming out of the last corner, resulted in higher entry speed to that corner of about 13 miles an hour by the time you're actually entering it, mm -hmm. which is fairly significant. Yeah. On your fast lap, it took you a little bit longer to get back on the throttle and committed, it mm -hmm. looks like. In both laps, you were back on throttle at about the same place, which is pretty interesting. I mean, it just shows how consistent you were being mm -hmm. on that lap. And actually, it looks like 
on your fast lap, that is where a significant part of your yeah. gains were made. You were able to accelerate out of that turn. So you see that's where a, a big change and probably that whole you know two or three seconds difference between yeah. those laps were. We can also create a new tab up here and we can call it reports. We're gonna add a review for our time reports. Add view, time reports. This combines all the best sections of all of your laps to see what you are capable of under you know, the perfect conditions. Here you can see our composite fastest times and our rolling fastest times. So here, based on all the fastest segments in your lap time, mm -hmm. we actually have a theoretical fastest of about ah. 137.2. That's pretty cool. So, What's cool is looking at this and seeing that you were capable of a 137. So that's a goal that's to shoot awesome for. That's pretty awesome to see, yeah. On this same track day when you were there, we were out with uh, Chris Forsberg's mm -hmm. team and Brian Heitkotter was running. So we can actually pull up his log as well that has some similar GPS data that we can compare this to. And that guy was moving. So mm -hmm. he was doing 128. 130s, 128s. You know, he was within a hundredth of a second mm -hmm. on every lap. And we can do a quick overlay on some of the channels that you guys have in common. What we could do, just by looking at these side by side, we can see at a given point on track, the speed difference between your lap and Brian's lap. Just on this first section, approaching turn one, Brian was at about 131 and you were at about 116. And then he even carried his speed a little bit deeper into the turn, mm -hmm. holding on to that yeah. 130 just a bit further. Now, mind you, you know, different cars, mm -hmm. different drivers, different tire setups. So there are a number of variables there to consider. That extra, you know, 20 mile an hour for his braking point was uh, definitely something to consider. And then as he's going through his braking point through the middle of turn one, his minimum speed through that turn was at about 85, yours 76. Mm -hmm seven to eight mm -hmm. mile an hour difference. And you can keep running that through the entire log and using that as a, uh, as a bit of a measuring stick, depending on you know, what you're looking to do or what other drivers are doing. I think with this, you know, we have a lot of good data here, but there's also other data points that we can collect, like mm -hmm. brake pressure, see where you were braking, where was your throttle application, and you'll be able to consistently see your progress and where you're making and where you're pushing the limits. Mm -hmm. This has helped out tremendously. Yeah, this, this gives you a good start, good baseline. Get out to the track, and if you have any questions, we have our tech guys, you have my number, we'll get you sorted out, help you go faster. Let's do it. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, man. Take care.